Hello, my name is Arthur, and in the last video we came up with a little bit of highlighting for numbers that still isn't working 100% and could use being um, fixed. And we also put in a function to limit the range of a search when we're just typing, so that results from a keystroke. Now I was thinking about that and I'm thinking that one of these isn't going to work out and that would be the multi-line comment and that's not going to work out because multi-line comments they just can't exist on two lines in that fashion so that's broken it um, what should have happened was everything become highlighted so that is going to need to be changed. So we'll just close that for now. And for the multi-line comment, we're just going to put it back to page and then maybe look at that later on and see if there's something better that can be done with that. So we'll compile that. We'll see if that fixes that little issue which I don't see why it wouldn't. So now if we mess around with comments, um, they should act properly. And I don't anticipate that will have too much effect on the typing because typing worked right up until we started doing the number check. So now at this point, we would want to look at instituting some keyword search so for keyword search to work we're going to need our list of keywords so i have that in this test document that we keep opening because this was an attempt at doing some syntax highlighting so let's just borrow that out of there and um i guess we could call the function keyword We'll just paste that in there and then we'll need to fix it up some so let's uh, do this a little bit faster way so we'll just fix this so it's not so lengthy Um, we'll leave this mark just as a reminder. So what this mark was, was to remind me which index, um, the types ended at, because these are all types and then all of the words past that are, um, things that we would treat differently. So we don't want to give them the same tags as types. So that'll do like that. That's a little more legible. And we can see where this is going to pose a bit of a problem when it comes to um, line by line search that results from a key press because it is a fair amount of things to, um, to be searching. So we'd have to iterate through all of these words to do the search so in order to do that we're going to need um, a couple more tags so we'll need one full we'll need two more so we'll just put two more in and do this 
So one more call keywords. And the other we'll call um, types. So types will remain a color. Let's get a color for that. So maybe something in the green. We won't be too picky about our colors here. So types will be a green. And what we'll do with the other keywords is we'll bold face them. So we'll give them a bold. Now I have that written down here. So let's borrow this out and paste it in. So types will be green and then the rest will be bold. So we're not changing the foreground, we're changing the weight. We're using Pango weight bold. And then the last argument there is null. So that'll give us our two tags. <clears throat> I think these tags will be fine being local to the keyword search. So we'll just um, borrow this. Um, is type a keyword? I don't think that it is. So we'll go type and um, keyword. We'll give these ones specific names. Let's look at our name, types, and keywords. So we have types and keywords for the name. We'll need to declare them. Whoops. We'll need to remove them. So we'll just borrow this. Put that in a couple of times. And put it in here. So we'll remove type and keyword. And that should be the bulk of the initializing stuff. Let's open up search because it has some stuff that'll be useful to us. So in search text, we have the little routine to um, do whole word. So when we're searching for uh, keywords, we're going to want to be able to do whole word. So they'll be case sensitive by default. But we need to check for an alphabet character next to them or an underscore next to them because that invalidates it as a whole word. Um, so we're going to need page number. Actually, we can probably come up 
will likely need check one, check two, page number. We'll need all of those things. So we can institute those. We're going to have to move page number. This we can get rid of. We don't need that. But page number will have to happen up here because we're using page right, oh, right away. Oops. That is not the way to move that. We'll just drop that one, put in page number. Okay, so we're going to need an integer for limit. So limit would be, we could use the size of calculation to figure out the size of that, or we can just use a fixed number. So let's see. So there's 32 keywords there. So we don't have to count. We'll just refer to my previous effort. We'll declare loop down here because it's for the for loop, so that makes it more clear where it belongs. Now, for keyword, things work a little bit differently because we have to function inside of a for loop. So, we need to actually have um, a search type. So we'll call it search type and we'll pass a value of either one or two. So we'll pass a number and we'll check what that number is inside of the for loop. So inside of the for loop, we'll, um, well, we'll start the for loop. Loop equals zero. Well, loop is less than limit. and loop increment up. So yeah, the first thing inside of here would be if search type equals one, So when we call the word search, we're not going to initialize the iters because they have to be initialized at each iteration of the loop for the search to be able to function for each of the keywords. So if search equals one, we'll initialize page iters. else initialize line enters then we would go into the while loop to do the search through whatever search area we're searching. The while loop will look very similar to any of the other while loops. So it'll be very similar to this. So we'll do a forward search using check one. And can just tab these forward a bit. Except what we're searching for is um, word at index loop. So 
So we'll search for the word at index loop. So here, um, I think we can just use if not check. Break. And yeah, there's a lot of instances where we could have done that before, because that actually comes from search, where rather than... Um, rather than nesting inside of brackets. I did it like this, rather than having if check else break and having to keep track of extra brackets. So yeah, that's something that could have been done in other places here as well. So let's just refer back to that one. If check, um, so we have check one. Um, I think at this point, what we should do is switch over to check two. So, yeah. So what we would do here is, if we haven't broken, we're going to go check two equals true. And then we'll do the check to disqualify check two. And then if check two was not disqualified, we'll apply the tag. So the check to disqualify would be right here. So we can basically just take this whole thing because we know that we're doing a whole word search. So this is the whole word search. We've already written that. And it's very similar to the number search except we don't move the iter backward if it starts a line. It doesn't need to check what's behind it on the next line if it begins the line. So it just skips this check. Um, if it doesn't start the line, so it would be a word like this, it would um, move backward one cursor, look for a underscore or anything alphanumeric. And if it finds that, it will switch check to being false. And then we do the same thing on the other side, we check if the keyword is at the end of a line. If it's at an end of a line, we don't want to check the next line's digit. So we just pass by it. It can't, because the keyword can't be di disqualified by anything that isn't on the line. And if it's not at the end of the line, it checks for the underscore or an alphanumeric character. <clears throat> this time it's checking at end because end is at the end of the, tr of the word. So we would have start here. It would go backwards a character to check what's before I. But end is here, so it only needs to check what's in front of it. It doesn't need to move to do that. So once it makes it to here, we need to check if check two. And we need to fix this because this should be check two. So if check two. Um, If check to 
Then we're going to look at the size of loop. So if we've made it to here, we're assigning a tag. So if loop is greater than, let's just look at the numbers I used here. is greater than or equal to 14. Greater than or equal to 14. We would assign a tag. So we'll copy that. else we would assign a tag and it's just a matter of which tag so um, keyword is green no type is green and keyword is boldface so if it's under 14 it's a type if it's above that well if it's under 15, it's a type, and if it's above, it's a keyword. And that all seems to be right. So here we don't need to initialize page editors because of the nature of the search has to initialize them itself. So here we would search for keyword. Is that what we called our, oh, we gave it an underscore. We would pass it a one. And here, keyword, and pass it a 2, although we're not checking what number we're passing there. So I think, um, I think that should all be functional. How well it's going to work for active search while typing, that's a completely another matter. I can't say that's going to work that way. Of course, right now I can't say it's going to work at all. That'll come down to how many mistakes before compiling. Okay, so I didn't declare temp. Where's the, where is that? 367. Yeah, we need to declare this. So let's declare temp up here. Char temp. That way it will have an appropriate scope and we won't have to sort that out. Okay, so we'll see if we just lock up or if we get results from that. Okay, we got results, <laughs> but they're backwards. <laughs> so all of our um, types are boldface and our um, other ones are green. So I have something backwards here, or is it backwards? Is it in main? All types should be green. Keywords should be bold. So, um... Oh. That was supposed to be less than. That's where the mistake is there. 
So we'll try that again. Get things to work right. Now I don't know if I can attach two tags to the bold faced ones and change their color as well. Let's just look at how things are working now. So we have a bold for for the keywords that aren't um, type assignments. We'll just run through and see if things all look right. So, so far, I don't see any problems here. It looks like if while void jar constant looks like we've gotten a good result like we're able to highlight the keywords we're getting the bold face on the other types of words so it's basically doing what this software does so the real question is how does it act when we type and yeah this is where we're getting into i'm not really sure we'll get a very good Well, it's honestly, it's not that bad. I don't feel as though it's sluggish on the keyboard at all. So it seems to be able to go through the search um, when we're doing it in that fashion. So we can check this. Okay, that did not work. So something there did not work. Same as that is not working. So we're getting the highlighting, but we're not getting... Oh, I have an idea why that is. Okay. So what's going on there is I'm trying to remove the tags, but start and stop don't have any location. In fact, I'm kind of surprised that it isn't tossing um, a grievance about using uninitialized iters. I would, I would think that in this circumstance I overlooked something that um, I would have thought that it would have a grievance there. What we actually need to do is to copy this and we have to initialize the iters. So before we can remove the tag, we have to initialize the iters. So we'll just tab this back and save that and then we'll give it another go. I'm pretty sure that'll clear that issue up. But in a way, yeah, it's a little surprising that it doesn't throw a grievance about the uninitialized editors. So let's just try. It highlights. Um, I'm actually surprised that it's still typing well. Okay, so that is not what we were looking for. Did I save that for sure? Let's make sure that I saved it first. Because I do know that sometimes I forget to save. Then I rewrite the entire script going, oh, that didn't work. So we'll just do it more quickly. Okay, so that wasn't it. It had to be part of it. Oh, 
Oh, we also have some nonsense here. So that's nonsense without making it a function call. Yeah. So hopefully this gets us there. There we go. That's the way it should act. So that seems to be reasonably functional. Um, Yep, that all looks like it's working, and it is still able to type, so that's, I'm going to consider that some pretty happy successful. So, yeah, in the next video, we'll start with the preprocessor words. Um, what we'll actually do is the preprocessor words excluding include, because include is its own special case. And, yeah, we'll look at how to get that done. And until then, I hope this video was helpful. And until the next one, take care.